I'm Robert Berry, clinical exercise physiologist and the clinical coordinator of cardiac rehabilitation at Henry Ford Hospital main campus, Detroit, Michigan. The global pandemic of COVID-19 represented unprecedented challenges to cardiac rehabilitation programs across the country. We're grateful to AACBPR for providing this opportunity to network with our colleagues and peers, sharing the Henry Ford Hospital response to this challenge and some of the thinking that went into shaping that response. This presentation has three parts, a telehealth video cardiac rehab model, a telephone-based cardiac rehab model, and lastly, a model for onboarding new patients who've experienced a recent event. Although you're going to see just three staff members in this webinar, the response to this challenge has truly been all hands on deck from preventive cardiology at Henry Ford Hospital. I would be truly remiss if the contributions of everyone in the preventive cardiology department were not acknowledged. So some background, some underlying assumptions. I think we can all agree that cardiac rehabilitation after a qualifying event is essential to the recovery of the patient. And that completely closing the program and not following patients potentially for months is not in their best interest. I think we would also agree that most cardiac rehab programs today already recommend to their patients that they engage in regular exercise at home, along with other healthy disease management strategies. The programs that we'll be talking about today aren't that big of a stretch from what we've all been doing for a long time. Here at Henry Ford, we've been fortunate to have an established telehealth cardiac rehab model in place since 2016. We've been able to do that because we contracted with two Southeastern Michigan payers to reimburse us for the service. We're including this program in this webinar because we've received numerous questions about it from all over the country. This is not necessarily the easiest thing to put together in a short time frame. The other programs that we'll discuss may be more immediately useful to you. The first response that we had to the COVID-19 crisis was to move existing cardiac rehabilitation patients to our video program whenever possible based on a few things. Number one, risk stratification. LVAD patients, patients who are milrinone, patients with nasty ventricular dysrhythmias without an ICD, they're a little bit too high risk for this program and they're not included. Second thing we had to consider was patient interest. Do they even want to do a program like this? Factoring in equipment availability, both exercise equipment and a smart device was also important. Although some of the patients in this program are just walking around their neighborhood or their apartment building. And lastly, insurance. This program is reimbursable by the two providers that I mentioned earlier. For everyone else in the program, we adapted this model, this telehealth model, to meet their cardiac rehab needs. The video model at Henry Ford uses a plug-in to the electronic medical record. That establishes a virtual private network through a secure patient portal that is HIPAA compliant. The video visits are scheduled in the EMR and the patient checks in through a free app on their smart device. The app enables a selfie camera on the patient's smart device to send synchronous video to the clinician's desktop and a webcam sends video to the patient. We can see them, they can see us. It's not that much different than standing next to them at the gym. The technical details of how this, this happens is included on a soon to be available e-published ahead of print Journal of Cardiac Rehabilitation and Prevention article, Telemedicine, Home-Based Cardiac Rehabilitation, a case series. Once we start the video session, they're 20 minutes in duration, the exercise intensity is either guided by target heart rate or RPE. Most of the participants who were in the program previously have a polar heart rate watch and a target heart rate from a symptom limited stress test. The patients who we transition later were just using RPE. All of the patients in all of the home based cardiac rehab programs, whether it's video model, or a simple telephone based model should be receiving all of the core elements of a brick and mortar cardiac rehabilitation program. We're just delivering it remotely. For both the video based program and the telephone based program that we'll review shortly, 
Patient education is based on narrated PowerPoint presentations. We turned our existing in-house cardiac rehabilitation lectures into 28 presentations, each one's four to seven minutes in duration. As much as we all love this stuff, nobody's sitting through a 45 minute video on coronary artery disease. It has to be short, it has to be accessible. While we're on the video calls, patient comprehension is assessed using the teach back method. Just a point of order, all of the materials that are referenced in this webinar will be available in the supplemental materials provided to AACBPR. Is there a silver lining? Is there a silver lining in all of this? The COVID-19 pandemic will likely push programs and insurance carriers closer to virtual cardiac rehabilitation. Patients are asking for it. Providers are asking for it. Two things to keep in mind if you're considering develop a developing a virtual cardiac rehab program. Number one, right now, HIPAA laws have been relaxed for the duration of this crisis. But in the long term, HIPAA compliance would need to be ensured. And second, whatever you build, however you build it, should contain all of the core elements of a traditional brick and mortar cardiac rehabilitation program. Think about it, when this is all over, whatever that is, when a patient states they can't come to cardiac rehab because they're going back to work or they don't have transportation or the hours don't match up, wouldn't it be great to have a fully developed, effective, home-based, alternative cardiac rehab program to offer, whether it's video-based or just simply telephone-based? With that in mind, with that thought, I want to turn you over to Ashley Betzer to review our telephone-based cardiac rehab program. Thank you. Hello, I'm Ashley Betzer. I'm a clinical exercise physiologist here at Henry Ford Hospital in Detroit, Michigan, and I will be discussing our telephone-based cardiac rehab program. For our current patients who are not eligible for our previously existing home-based cardiac rehab program, we have implemented a telephone-based home exercise program to maintain contact and keep our patients engaged. We believe it is incumbent upon us to provide and encourage regular physical activity and appropriate disease management during the COVID-19 shutdown. And as such, we have begun calling our current patients on a weekly basis to keep in contact. Each phone call lasts approximately five to 10 minutes, but it's all dependent on the needs of the patient. During each call, we are sure to hit each core element of cardiac rehab. Patients are asked how they are feeling overall and if they are experiencing any concerning signs or symptoms. They're also being asked about weighing themselves daily and whether they are checking their blood sugars at home when appropriate. We also discuss with patients if they are engaging in any type of regular purposeful physical activity, and if so, how often are they doing it and for how long are they doing it each time. If patients report that they are not being physically active, we're encouraging them to increase their activity levels as much as possible and giving suggestions on how they can be more physically active within the comfort of their homes. We're also sure to discuss any concerns the patient may have regarding nutrition, medication compliance, and any other general health concerns. Overall, patients are grateful that we are contacting them um, during the COVID-19 closure and are happy to hear a familiar voice. And a lot of times what we're finding is that our weekly phone calls to them may be the only interaction they're having with the outside world. In addition to our phone calls, we still want to make sure patients are receiving the structured education on exercise, nutrition, and disease management they would usually receive from us in a facility-based cardiac rehab program. As a supplement, we have encouraged our patients to watch the same narrated PowerPoint presentations used in our home-based cardiac rehab program. We are not completing formal ITPs with our patients in light of AACDPR's recent clarification that it's not necessary to burden physicians with any extra work during the COVID-19 crisis. But this does not mean that we are not addressing patients' individual issues and how to navigate them. We've documented in each patient's chart within our EMR that their cardiac rehab program has been suspended, along with documenting each contact or attempted contact that we've had. We have developed a template for our phone calls using smart phrases to document each phone encounter. And last, we still want to be our patient's go-to source for health-related information. So we've developed a weekly email that we are sending to our patients with their permission, containing information related to fitness, nutrition, and general health information and news. We understand that maintaining a relationship with our current patients and keeping them engaged in cardiac rehab is in their best interest, and we are hopeful to continue helping them through the COVID-19 pandemic while improving their health. And next, I'd like to introduce Roxanne Harbeck, 
who will be discussing onboarding new patients who have experienced events since the COVID-19 outbreak. Thank you. My name is Roxanne Herbach and I am a clinical exercise physiologist with the Henry Ford Hospital, Detroit. So I'm going to go over our virtual cardiac rehab orientation that we have started here at Henry Ford. Unfortunately, people don't stop having MIs and cabbages as we confront this pandemic. So we want to make sure that we progress um, with their continuity of care. We know that delaying entry into cardiac rehab for these patients is not in their best interest. So in order to get, keep their care going at Henry Ford, we started this virtual cardiac rehab orientation. So our, our initial pool for the cardiac rehab um, uh, orientation were those individuals who have already attended our orientation at a facility. Um, but who have not started their exercise program due to the start of the pandemic. We know that these individuals were already engaged in our program and we wanted to keep that momentum going. We have since expanded this program to include patients with new events. These patients were identified from our existing on-site orientation schedules as well as through our work queue. These patients have been pre-screened, just as we've done before, to make sure that they qualify for cardiac rehab. And they are initially contacted by phone, and then um, during this process, what we are trying to emphasize is that this is the next step in their recovery process. So the in-depth um, orientation with them is either conducted um, via phone or video. Um, that, that part is patient preference as well as access to technology. So it requires a smartphone as well as a MyChart app to be loaded on their phone. We go extensively into their EMR medical history and then that is reviewed with the patient. Right? We are also looking at their current and previous physical activity, see where they are at with their exercise, we're looking at orthopedic limitations and any other issues that you know may limit their exercise or may direct us in a certain um, way in terms of what type of exercise they are um, uh, able to do. All right. We also want to assess what access to um, exercise equipment that they have. Do they have a safe environment to exercise? Again, what access to technology that they might have, smartphones, smart TVs, so that we can look at um, uh, fitness apps, YouTube videos that might be appropriate for them. They will also receive a link to our cardiac rehab orientation video, as well as our home-based cardiac rehab education that we spoke about um, previously. And those links will be sent to them um, either via their MyChart or via email. And all the links will be available to the supplemental material um, through this presentation through um, AACPPR. So if the patient is agreeable to the home exercise program, they are enrolled in the program as we had described earlier. What we're looking at initially for a frequency for their exercise would be at least twice a week, and that's going to be titrated up or down as needed based on the patient's current you know, physical activity as well as any limitations that they might. But what we truly want to do is emphasize with the patient is getting moving with a, you know, a, a regular physical activity program as well as to get them engaged in the education for you know, their cardiac um, disease that they have. So um, for some, um, this may be their only contact with cardiac rehab as um, you know, this pandemic ends. So what we are looking at for some is that they may, after the pandemic ends, that they may be going back to work. Um, for others, and this is the bulk of uh, what we're expecting from our patients, is that they will be enrolled in a facility-based cardiac rehab program once the COVID-19 restrictions are lifted. What we're looking to do is prevent any deconditioning, keep them on track, keep them doing their regular activities that they you know, desire to do. Um, what, what we want to do is to really um, enhance these cardiac rehab benefits, you know, reduce hospitalization, um, reduce morbidity and mortality, um, and we know that is connected through that increase in fact in physical activity. These are the tools that the Henry Ford Health System is using to accomplish those goals. 
So to wrap this up, we have presented um, what Henry Ford is doing in terms of how to handle this unique situation that we're currently under so that we can continue to service our patients. Obviously, there are many ways to address the situation, but we hope that you will find um, some of the suggestions that we have useful so that you can hopefully help your patients reach out to them and engage them in cardiac rehab for the future. Thank you.